So those possessive dogs, sometimes I don't have the bringing back before I thinking, wow, you're really into this. And if I don't teach you to out pretty soon, then it's gonna get harder. So one of the things about let, teaching a dog to let go of objects is when do I start to do that, right? If I start too soon, then a lot of times I diminish the dog's passion for the activity. They're like, oh, no, I don't wanna do this anymore, right? Other dogs, if I wait too long, it gets really hard to get them to let go. And then I have to wind up potentially using pressure and things like that to get the dog to let go because they're so dedicated. And so there's a sweet spot in our dog's development where they're playing with energy, and if I introduce the out at the right time, it's really easy. A couple of sessions, they've got it, they're like, oh, outing isn't bad, it's a way to start up the game again. And I'll talk about the mechanics of this in a second, but it's a way to start the game up again, and the dog's like, oh, great, cool, that's no big deal, right? And, but if I do it too early, it's diminishing, and if I do it too late, it gets harder. And so there's a little bit of a feel for a given dog and when we're gonna teach them to let go. And so typically if the dog's playing really well, they're tugging or they're biting the toy and they're playing with energy, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna teach you to out now. And I'll try. If it's really easy and the dog does it really easily, or if the dog does it and then is diminished, they don't wanna play so much after I've asked them to let go, then I don't do as much of it. I put it off. If the dog resists a little bit, I go, okay, let's get this out of the way now. And I'll stick with it for a few sessions until I get them outing. And so then I'm like, okay, we're, we're, we've got this going now, right? So that I don't wait too long and create a problem, right? So the little puppy there is just about to start teething, probably. And so she's not bringing the toy back completely yet. She's possessive little cuss, right? And so she likes to have her stuff and she loves to carry it around and hold on to it. She's very, what we call, dedicated to the dead object, right? There are dogs that when the object stops moving, they're not interested in it anymore. If it's moving, they're chasing it, they're grabbing it. Those dogs, there's activity, there's something to be had there. And other dogs, uh, and as soon as it stops, they're like, mm, that's not interesting anymore. They chew on it or drop it or whatever. And there are other dogs that, that are very dedicated to an object that's not moving. They're just, and hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, right? And so there are advantages to a dog that's, that's dedicated to a dead object. It's easier to teach them to hold on to things and retrieve and stuff like that. And there are disadvantages. One, they're satisfied by having it. So the interactive part of it's a little harder to create. They don't need you. They're happy. I've got my thing. I'm perfectly content to hold on to this object. So the dogs that like dead objects typically are a little harder to get to let go. So maybe we'll teach her to out, we'll try to teach her to out today, right? So we, we haven't done any outing with her. And so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll play, we'll play with it a little bit. She's extremely dedicated to the object. So she has a lot of prey drive. She likes to bite a lot, right? And so this will be a, a good laboratory so you guys can see what it looks like when we first teach it to a dog.